hear some hesitancy from Christians with people who are in the church over this issue of apologetics. And I think part of it is there's this perception that apologetics, the idea of following evidence, using evidence to make a case for Christianity, that this in some way devalues faith. You know, if the apologetics, we're looking at evidence, we're looking for, we're, we're trying to establish facts and this uh, pursuit of certainty. We want to be certain of the truth of our faith. You know, I would say, oh, I want to be a Christian because it's true, but that the pursuit of the, of establishing the truth, of having certainty over the truth, this in some way devalues faith. We're saying that faith is, is not a part of our, of our decision making or doesn't influence us and that in some way wanting certainty or wanting to know whether Christianity is true uh, means that you could you you no longer are looking to have faith in something. Now I'm sure that there are some some Christians, some people who are involved in apologetics or even who are involved in apologetics who maybe they do place too much value on certainty and not enough value on faith. But I don't think that these things are mutually exclusive. The, the idea that you're searching for truth, you want to know the truth through using uh, uh, evidences, using reason to determine, hey, what is true? Is, my, is the faith that I'm placing Christianity um, reasonable? I don't think that that necessarily uh, c conflicts with this idea of having faith, putting our faith in something. I think you can have faith while still uh, wanting to pursue the evidence where it leads. And uh, I think that there, it's possible to want to have a reasonable faith. I think that it doesn't take with the faith out of it. But I do think, uh, to be fair, I think that the people who make this case, hey, uh, don't don't put too much emphasis on certainty. We want to, again, there's still an important aspect about faith within our Christian uh, life. I think that they might have a point. And I think that sometimes if we put too much value or we put too much emphasis on looking for evidence or rationality, we could sort of um, maybe mistake, have a mistaken goal of reaching certainty that we could never really find. Certainty is a really interesting thing. You know, I think that there are things that we could be certain of, but I think a lot of the beliefs that we hold, a lot of things that we say we know are true, we don't have actual certainty of, you know, uh, I think the, the statement, hey, um, you can be certain of some things, uh, it seems to be true because the to say that you, you cannot be certain of anything, this would be a statement that uh, sort of defeats itself. I would be, if I said, you cannot be certain of anything, well, I would be essentially saying, hey, I'm certain of the fact that you cannot be certain of anything. Okay, so I think there's just, for that reason alone, we can accept that we can be certain of at least one thing, uh, that there, that you can have certainty about something. The question is, can we have certainty about everything in our lives? Uh, you know, I, I, I noticed growing up, I went, you know, you go to high school and you take a variety of topics. But if you, if you remember back to your classes, some of the times the, the teaching in your English class or your history class would follow sort of, it would have like a different feel from your math class. You know, if, if, when you went into for your final in math, or at least this is, was my perception of it, when I went in to take a math final, I knew that there was going to be a series of questions and I was going to, you know, c circle the right answer, A, B, C, or D, or whatever, and that the teacher was going to give me an exact score based on how well I answered the questions. Because each of those questions, there's only one possible right answer, right? The uh, basic math question, one plus one. There's only one answer to the question, right? Two. That's the only correct answer. But in my English class, if I went to English and I'm doing my, taking my final, I've got an English essay to write about something I read. You know, I wrote read a book and I'm going to write my essay on it. There's a number of quote unquote right answers, a number of papers that I could write that would all get an A, even though they might be very different from each other. They might even take different uh, positions. It's not to say that there's no wrong answers in English. I could have written a poorly written paper and gotten a bad grade. But there's a certain difference between these two classes. In, in math, we can be, I think that we have a certain degree of certainty in math that we don't in our English class, or our history class. Maybe that's an even better example. Uh, in math, we can be certain 
through reason alone that one plus one will always equal two, will never equal anything else. We can have absolute certainty. We can, we, there's, we can have no, uh, there's no need to, for us to have doubt about this question. But when it comes to historical facts, like, um, I'm, not, I'm not a big historian. Did King Arthur exist? I don't even know if that's a good question or not. You know, I've heard about King Arthur. I really don't know if, is he just a myth that somebody made up? But let's, let's say that this is just for the sake of argument. This is our historical question. Did King Arthur exist? We're going to look at evidence from history to try to figure out did King Arthur exist? Like, uh, I don't really know. <laughs> I don't know the exact answer to this question, but maybe we'd be look if I wanted an answer, I'd be thinking about, hey, what did historians say? Is there any ancient historian that wrote about King Arthur? Uh, how long, you know, between when he was supposed to have lived and the first mention of him in writing to exist? You know, what, who, who was it the first person who wrote about him? And is that an authoritative source? You know, I'm, I'm going to be asking these questions. And I might come to an answer about whether he existed or not. Maybe, maybe my answer is he did not exist. Or maybe my answer is he did exist. But if, no matter where I fall, wherever I end up this, making my decisions, I'm not going to have the same type of certainty like I have with one plus one equals two, like I would have in math. In math, I'm gonna have true certainty. One plus one absolutely equals two. It never equals anything else. But is it possible that even after a great deal of research, I concluded King Arthur never lived, is it possible that he actually did and I'm wrong? Well, yes, it's it's, it's still within the realm of possibility. We're, I'm just gonna hopefully say it's it's more reasonable to think no than yes. So I might not ever get that true certainty that absolute certainty that I would want in history, asking a historical question, like I would with math. Okay, so what does that have to do with, with apologetics or with our faith? Well, I want to be, I want to have confidence when I when I decide to follow Jesus with my life. When I'm, I'm going to, I'm now going to be a Christian. I've, I've looked at the evidence. I when I decide to actually put my faith in something, how certain should I be? Do I need to have absolute certainty like I would have in math? I don't know. You know, if I'm asking a question like, did Jesus, is, was Jesus God? Did Jesus really raise from the dead? I can answer that question using historical evidence. But just like I'm, the example of King Arthur, there's always the possibility that I'm, I was wrong. You know, I'm going to look at the evidence. I'm going to say things like, hey, uh, Jesus... You know, he, we know through history he lived, that his tomb was empty after he was crucified, that his followers said that they saw him alive afterwards, and that they led these radically transformed lives, they were willing to die for this, yada, yada. I can make an argument from history whether Jesus, I think Jesus rose from the dead or not, whether I think Jesus was God or not. But could I ever have the certainty about the claim, the way that I'm certain of a mathematical equation that one plus one equals two. I don't think I would have certainty in the same way about the, my claim about Jesus. From no matter wh whether I follow the evidence or I blindly believe, I don't know if I'd ever have the same level of same kind of certainty as I would with math from simply following the evidence. So where does that leave me? If I'm somebody who I want to follow the evidence, I want to be a rational person. I want to know what's the truth, and I want to. Uh, be reasonable, but, but at the evidence, and and really, um, really only make a decision based on on the most. Uh, re I want to draw the most reasonable conclusion from from my search. If I can never get the certainty, though, should I ever make a decision for Jesus? Like, I, even if I concluded rationally from the evidence that Jesus is the most reasonable conclusion, that the most reasonable conclusion to draw is that Jesus really lived, really claimed to be God, really rose from the dead. Should I put my faith in him, knowing that I still don't have that true certainty that I would like? You know, there is going to be an element of faith here because I don't have that true certainty. Well, here's here's what I, I would suggest to you. You know, if we're simply answering a historical question like, did King Arthur exist? Regardless of my question, the way I answer this question, there's not much effect on my life. Uh, if I'm wrong about King Arthur, if I'm wrong about this historical question that I'm asking, well, I think I'm going to be okay either way. And so I can kind of, even though I might uh, follow the evidence, I kind of have this idea, oh, I think he did or he didn't exist. I can kind of hold off making a final conclusion or really changing the way I live my life based on my answer because uh, 
there's no risk that, uh, with my risk reward assessment. There's not really much risk in me being wrong about King Arthur. But there, I would say that if if the claims of Jesus are true, if Jesus really claimed to be God and he really rose from the dead, you know, vindicating, validating his his claims, then I think there is a risk or reward to our response to this question. If we're in a life or death scenario, uh, you know, I'm driving down the street and a car accident occurs in front of me and now I've got to decide, do I swerve right or left to avoid the accident? I don't have a lot of time to make the decision. So it, based on just what I know in that moment, I've got to make a split second decision to potentially save my life, the life of my passengers. And so I'm just gonna go with whatever I thought was most reasonable at the time, right or left. Because it's a life or death scenario. Well, Jesus actually kind of, of makes claims that would put us in sort of a life or death type situation. You know, Jesus says that all people are sinful and that we deserve condemnation from God because of the sins, the bad things that we've done, that we, that's, that's what justice would, would demand, but that Jesus would sacrifice himself. He's going to willingly die on the cross in order for justice to be satisfied and for us to be offered the opportunity of forgiveness, salvation, to be reunited with our creator, even though we don't deserve to be. Well, if that is true, if his, if his claim is true, then we've got a sort of life or death decision to make. If we are, if Jesus was was actually God and the things he was saying were true, then we, if we do not put our faith in him, we won't be reunited with our creator. We'll have to face the justice for our sins. But if we do put our faith in him, now we have this opportunity of forgiveness, the forgiveness that, that God would offer. Now, that's not to say that we should just immediately, in this second, we have to make the decision like the uh, like with the car accident, I've just got to sort of guess, maybe it's a 50-50, I, I swerve right or left. I'm not trying to say that the, the we've got to make that kind of decision about Jesus, but if we're following the evidence and we're starting to see that it is more reasonable that Jesus was God than, it, than not, well, I don't know how long we can really make before making the decision. It's, you know, it's, I think it's natural, at least for me, to be kind of, uh, to take for granted my life I, I got up, up today and I drove my car to the store and back. And I didn't think anything of it, but potentially at any moment I could have been in that life ending car accident. Or I might have it just, even though uh, I don't expect to, what if I just had a heart attack right now? It's, it's definitely within the realm of, of possibility. I don't know how much longer I've got to live. So I don't know how much longer I have to make this decision. So I don't know if I can wait for absolute certainty or to be, to be more certain than I am now. In assessing this question, if, should I be a Christian or not, if we're going to use the evidence, I think we want to follow the evidence where it leads, but as we're seeing that it's more reasonable to believe that Christianity is true than not, I want to make sure that I don't have the attitude that where I'm hesitant to make the decision while I've got the time. I might need to make the decision, I, yeah, I need to put my faith in this, that God really does exist, that Jesus really was God, even though I still have some other questions even though I still want to continue to follow the evidence, I can still ask those questions even as a Christian. There's no, there's nothing that says that as a Christian, I need to know all the answers ahead of time or I can't have any doubts after my uh, statement of faith. But what I don't want to do is for some, for because I'm chasing this, this impossible goal of certainty, I held off on my decision and I ran out of time. So I think when, as, as we're following the evidence, I want to be rational, I want to be reasonable, but I don't want to miss my opportunity when I know what is mo the most reasonable answer is Jesus to finally make that decision. I need to put my faith in this. This is true.